On March 15, 1989, three college students from a small town in Texas were enjoying their spring break in Southern California. They had been cautioned by their parents to be careful on their trip out west, but 19-year-old Ed Cozen and his friends never imagined they'd find trouble while walking along a beautiful beach in the peaceful community of Malibu. Jody and Jeff and me, we're very, very close. In very few lifetimes, they're as close as friendship as we have. We're like brothers. Let's go for a swim, guys. No way. On that water. Hey, what do you guys think about oh. this? We're on the beach, and we see this cliff. Why not? And it's incredible. And we decide it's there. Let's climb it. Watch the sand on your feet. Ed went up first. He's a very, very lanky and strong person. And then I went up because Jody had decided that because I was shorter than he was and he was stronger than, than myself, he would stay behind to make sure I didn't fall. It was really, really easy at first. There was no problems and we climbed and climbed. About halfway up, we, just, we saw that it was getting very, very, very steep, very steep. Uh, I personally, myself, started getting a little bit scared, and I'm sure the others did too, but we were men, you know. Ciao, Jody. We wanted to prove to each other that we could make it up the hill. Hey, 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 hey. Oh. You okay, Jody? I uh, make it all the way up to the top, and Jeff wanted to take a picture of Jody. So I went to the other side, to uh, look at the view. Hey, Jody, smile! I looked back down at Jody, and Jody had absolutely no fear. He seemed very, very in control of the situation. I'd never heard Jeff yell like that before. He yelled to me, go get help, Jody had fallen. It's taken us about an hour to climb up the mountain and I got down in probably a minute. I ran over to him and I realized that uh, he was gonna be in serious trouble. Uh, Hold on, bud, you're gonna be okay. <clears throat> At first, I just didn't want to touch him. I didn't know if his back was broken or his neck was broken, but uh, he was having a lot of trouble breathing. Oh, man. Edwin, get help. I put my hand on the back of his head in order to try and gently shift it so that he would be right. more able to breathe. Uh, when I did so, my whole hand collapsed into his head. And my fingers were actually in his brains. Ed found lifeguard Bob Ingersoll who happened to be patrolling the beach just a few hundred yards away. As I came upon him, I could hear his breath was occluded. It was very raspy. The way he was breathing, it was possible he had internal injuries. His condition was, was one of the worst that I'd seen. He needed to be taken to the hospital immediately. There was, there was no time to waste. Roger, what have we got? Oh, this guy fell off the rocks. He's sort of in an anal breathing pattern. In the back of my mind, I thought he might die. But I didn't want to believe it. I wouldn't let it surface to the front. L.A. County paramedics were on the scene within 10 minutes. Gap, we got a uh, head injury. I've never realized how much Jody meant to me. I never realized how much I loved him. I never realized what friends actually meant until uh, the medic basically said, this kid's probably going to die. A rescue helicopter from the Los Angeles County Fire Department arrived within 12 minutes. Among those on board was paramedic Robert Fuller. The best location for us at that point was some distance from the patient. Sorry, paramedics! Uh, we knew that we had a situation that we referred to as a scoop and run. Okay, guys, what do you got? This guy, he was, he was broken up. And that meant that as soon as we could get the patient secured, we were going to begin rapid transport.
Jody was rushed to Westlake Medical Center, where a trauma team was awaiting his arrival, including Dr. John Kadurka. When he arrived in the emergency department, this guy was a mess. He had a low blood pressure, he had a weak, thready, rapid pulse rate. He had agonal respirations, he had obvious head injury where he was unconscious. He had massive chest trauma, he had fractured ribs on both the sides. He had a collapsed lung. This is probably one of the worst trauma patients I've taken care of in several years. I didn't think this guy stood a chance to live. 19-year-old Jody Nolan underwent more than eight hours of surgery, during which his spleen and part of one lung were removed and numerous broken bones repaired. When his parents, Alice and Truett, arrived from Texas, they found their critically injured son in a coma. He's received some major injuries to his chest and his abdomen. I was very nervous about going in to see him for the first time. Didn't know what I would see. I knew he would be on the respirator. Jody. I, I knew that my son may die and I kept trying to get some reassurance from the nurses you know, and the doctors is he going to make it do you think he's going to make it is there any way he can make it and of course no one could assure us of that and that's a terrible feeling <clears throat> Jody can you feel my hand squeeze it if you do I told my wife that Jody was running the race of his life tonight and that he may not win it and we have to prepare ourselves if he didn't make it Jody oh you got another letter today yeah. looking at my brother the thoughts going through my mind were oh my god I'm gonna lose someone else that's really close to me and I thought about uh, my family and my parents and what it would be like to have three in the family instead of four your big Bronco's at my house, and I adjusted the carburetor for you. Either my wife or my daughter or some of our friends were, was by his side at all times, and we kept talking to him even when he was in the coma. We felt that if he knew we were there, then he would leave us. The first time I really remember him starting to come out in the coma was a very exciting moment. Can you hear me, Jody? Of course I can. This was almost three weeks into it, and it was like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. After months of intense rehabilitation therapy, Jody has resumed a full and active life. They told me I'd been in this big fall, and, uh, I barely remembered I was in California. Come on! <laughs> I was listening to the radio. Some of the songs on the radio I'd never heard before. And it was like waking up Rip Van Winkle or something, just missing. Here's some of my fancy footwork. <laughs> Let me show you. I think Jody was an inspiration to people in the rehabilitation center because he, he gave it 100%. He would always do more than it was asked of him to do. Uh, and he did it in a cheerful manner most of the time. Several years have passed since the accident. The three friends are still close. When I see Jody today, it's, it's, it's absolute astonishment. It's, it is a miracle. Uh, I don't think that there's anything wrong with him now. In fact, uh, before I'd always thought, you know, he had something lacking up there. But uh, no, there's, there's nothing wrong with him now, absolutely nothing. In fact, he's, he's more mentally aware now than I've ever seen him. I think it's a miracle to see him today accomplishing things that I thought would never be possible. Come on now. Roll up. You know, I thought he'd be lucky to tie his shoes. <laughs> Uh, when I think about all the people that helped me down the line, and there was a lot of people, yeah, you know, I'd like to go and, you know, hug and kiss every one of them and say thanks. You know, I, I can't repay you, but anytime you need me, I'll be there for you. Three years after the accident, I went back to Point Doom. I felt the part of me was back there, it was pulling me back. And so I felt it was time for me to go back out there and see it. 
there was a sense when we drove away that we were putting it behind us and that it didn't have to be the center of our lives anymore, that we had made it through. It's, it's a new beginning. I ended one chapter of my life and now it's time to start a new one. Next. There's something about the innocence of youth. If you see an older person that's lived a good life, you try your darndest, but there isn't the sadness when things don't go well.